to invite our children to come and have a seat on the carpet for our story this morning. Well, good morning. Well, a long, long time ago in the islands of Britain, there was a goddess whose name was Kerrigan. Now, some versions of the story say she was a witch. But that's just because by the time they got around to writing down these stories, people didn't believe in goddesses anymore. Well, that's their loss, but <laughs> Caridman is most definitely a goddess. And Caridman lived deep in the forest in a small cottage with her two children. She had a daughter who was pretty and wise and kind. She had a son whose name was Afegdu. And Afegdu, well, there's just no nice way to say this. Afegdu was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> he was so ugly that his mother worried that he'd have a real hard time making his way in the world. Now, we'd never treat somebody bad just because of the way they look, would we? No. Uh -huh. Well, people weren't quite so enlightened back then. And so Kieridman <laughs> was, was right to be concerned for him. And even though she was a goddess, there wasn't anything she could do about his looks. But she said, I can't change your looks, but I can give you wisdom. And so she set out to brew the island, the, the elixir of wisdom and in, inspiration. And she set up a huge cauldron. Looks kind of like that little cauldron, except it was big. And she filled it full of water. And she went out into the forests and fields, and she gathered herbs and roots and other plants, and she put them into the cauldron. She built a big roaring fire up under it and started to, started to cook. And she started stirring it slowly. Stirring it slowly. Well, now one of the properties of the island was that it had to brew for a year and a day. And during that whole time, it could never go out and it could never boil over. Well, that meant that somebody had to be tending the cauldron all around the clock. And Caridman couldn't do that. I mean, she was a goddess. She had important goddess work to do. <laughs> so she found an old man to tend the cauldron during the day. And attended at night, she found a young boy whose name was Gwian Bach. And so every evening, right at sunset, Gwian would come around. He'd go out, he'd gather wood, and he'd build up the fire. He'd pour a little bit of water into the cauldron. And he'd stir it carefully, making sure it never, never went out, <coughs> making sure it never boiled over. And he did this every night for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks, for a month. For two months, three months, four months, five months. He did this every night for a year. Well, he'd been keeping up with the time, and he knew the Alwyn was almost ready, and so did Caridman. And she came up to him and said, Now, the Alwyn will be ready tomorrow. And when it's ready, you make sure you call me. You don't drink this at all. This is for my son, Afegdu. One of the other properties of the Alwyn was that the first three drops out of the cauldron would have all the wisdom in the world, but everything else left in the cauldron would be the deadliest poison. Well, that was okay with Gwen. I mean, he'd been paid well for his work. He just wanted to go do something else. So he spent his last night doing what he always did. He tended to the fire, poured a little water in, stirred the cauldron carefully. Well, just before dawn, just as the eastern sky was starting to glow, it happened. The fire went out. The cauldron began to bubble and boil. Steam began to come out of it. And three drops of steaming hot liquid flew out of the cauldron and landed on Gwen's thumb. And it burned his thumb. And Gwen did what we all do when something burns our thumb. And he tasted the almond. And he, he gained all the wisdom of the world. And since he had all the wisdom of the world, the first thing he recognized was that Kierigman was not going to be happy with him. <laughs> and he did the only sensible thing he could do. He ran. <laughs> he ran as fast as he could into the woods. Well, Kierigman had heard all the commotion. She got up there and she saw the cauldron with the fire out and steam coming everywhere and Gwen nowhere to be found. Yeah, she knew what had happened. Yep. She was mad. And she took off running after him. Well, Gwen looked back, and he saw Caridman gaining on him. But he had tasted the Awen. He had all the wisdom in the world, including the wisdom of shape-shifting. 
And so he changed himself into a hare, into a small rabbit, and he darted along under the brush. But Carradine changed herself into a greyhound, and she followed after him, getting closer and closer. Well, they got close to a stream, and Gwen jumped into the stream, and just before he hit the water, he changed himself into a salmon, and he began to swim down the river as fast as he could. But Carradine changed herself into an otter, and she followed, getting closer and closer. Well, Gwen jumped up out of the water, like you'll see fish do sometimes, and as he hit the air, he changed himself into a sparrow, and he took off flying high into the sky. But Carradine changed herself into a hawk, and she followed, followed along behind him, getting closer and closer. Well, by now, Gwen realized he was not going to outrun Carradine. So as he was flying over the countryside, he saw a huge pile of grain. And he dove straight into that pile of grain. And as he was going in, uh, getting into the pile, he changed himself into a grain of corn. And he was hidden there amidst all those thousands and thousands of other grains. But Caridwen changed herself into a hen. And she picked through the corn one grain at a time until she found the grain that was Gwen, and she ate it up. But that's not the end of the story. Because deep inside Caridwen, that grain began to grow and grow and grow. Nine months later, she gave birth to a baby boy. And she was still very angry. But when she took a look at him, she knew she couldn't hurt him. Still real mad at him, though. She wrapped him up in a leather bag. She rode out into the ocean. And she set the bag afloat on the sea to let it go where the tides and the winds would carry it. Well, as, it would, as things would have it, Caridwen had barely made it back to the shore when a fisherman came along. And he saw a leather bag bobbing out in the ocean. I wonder what that's doing out there. So he rode over, and he pulled the bag into his boat. He opened it up, and there was this baby boy. And his face was shining so brightly, the fisherman said, I will call you Taliesin, which means radiant brow. And Taliesin would go on to become the greatest bard, the greatest poet and singer and storyteller that Britain has ever known. But that's another story for another time.